Yo, Adam Saxon here with Guy in a Cube, another week, another roundup, and this week I've got some interesting things I'd like to share with you. If it's your first time here, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from Patrick and myself. With that, let's dig in. Greg Deckler is having some fun with graphing, and this is part five of five. He's had some other previous posts as well that go over different types of graphing approaches, and in this specific article, he's talking about the Vixec fractal graph, and he walks through how you can actually set up the data from a Power Query perspective and then show that in a Power BI chart. It's actually pretty interesting and in what you can play with, and I'm sure some people could probably get creative and show some other cool things. Maybe, you know, a Picard face palm? I don't know. That might be something interesting to try in my copious spare time. But if you're interested in different graphing techniques and how you might go about doing that from a Power BI perspective, definitely check out this blog post. Reza Rad's got a blog post about Power BI architecture guidelines, and so he just walks through some different approaches when you're architecting your solution for Power BI. This looks at approaches from both the self-service side of things as well as from the enterprise, and there are different ways to go about doing it from a solution perspective when you're looking at either of those approaches. And so Reza talks about both at a high level, but it gives you some ideas of what you should start thinking about. So if you're looking at deploying Power BI, or if you're already out there and you maybe want to clean some things up, this may be a good blog post for you to check out. David Eldersveld's got a blog where he's looking at a collapsible slicer pane. I've actually seen this approach in other spots, and I'm really happy David wrote a blog about this. This is an interesting technique and really takes advantage of a couple of features inside of Power BI, namely bookmarks and selections. And then you could also throw in buttons as well to handle this. So the video that Patrick did uh, last week talked about this as well from a button perspective and what you can do to show and hide things from a bookmark perspective. And David Eldersveld looks at how you can do this from a slicer pane. So if we don't want it taking up all that space, we wanna maybe collapse it and then expand it for people to use just from a usability perspective, this is a really great technique for how to declutter your report when stuff's not needed. So if you're interested in using bookmarks and selections to hide things and wanna know more about it, check out this blog post. Also, you can check out Patrick's video from last week as well. I'll have that linked around here. The link for this item, as well as all the items discussed in this roundup and bonus items down in the description below, go check it out. We've got a new update for the on-premises data gateway, so be sure to check that out. In this blog post, it calls out the things that are inside of the gateway. The big item that I saw is public preview for custom data connectors with the personal gateway. So if you're creating a custom data connector using the SDK, the Power Query SDK, that is now supported for refresh with the personal gateway. So be sure to update and check that out if that's something you're utilizing. Also, there's now single sign-on support using Kerberos with the SAP BW connector. So you can check that out if you're using SAP BW. So make sure that you update the gateway to the latest version, that you keep that up to date so that you don't run into any problems. And then check out the blog post for all the details. We've got a developer update on the Power BI side. This includes custom visuals, as well as Power BI Embedded. This is very timely, being as Microsoft Build is next week, so that's great. Inside of this, cool things for Power BI Embedded, report tooltips are now supported when embedding. Yay! Also, Q&A Explorer is also available when embedding as well, so you can check out the blog post for more details on that. For Power BI Embedded, also we've got new Azure metrics that are available for you. So if you're utilizing the Power BI Embedded resources inside of Azure, so those are your capacity resources on the Azure side, there are new metrics available for you to gain insights as to what's happening with your capacity. So this involves memory, it involves QPUs, all sorts of things, so check that out as well. The blog post also looks at how you can set up an Azure alert based on those metrics as well so that you can get notified when something happens if you need to be made aware of. On the custom visual front, I'm actually really excited about this because of the fact that so many people have asked me, it's like, look, we know in the documentation we've got items on how do you get your environment set up to actually create custom visuals. So these are the components that you have to install and how do you actually create the custom visual project. But I've had a lot of questions for okay, but how do I actually make the custom visual? Like, what's the code I have to write? How do I learn that part of it? 
And this involves things like D3 engines. If that's what you're gonna use, you can use others as well, but also the TypeScript format and the APIs that are used to actually create those stunning visuals. So for custom visuals, there's a new lab that's available for you to take a look at and get some experience on how to create those custom visuals. So that's super exciting. Peter Myers was the one that helped put this together. So kudos to Peter and if you are interested in learning how to create custom visuals, be sure to check this out, check out the lab and let us know what you think. And also as a reminder, if you're gonna be at the Microsoft Build Conference next week, come by in the expo hall, say hi, I'm gonna be there. A lot of the folks from the product team are gonna be there as well. So you can interact with us, share your thoughts, give us your feedback. We'd love to meet you and talk with you. All right. Check out all the updates in the developer update blog down in the description. Go check it out, you know you want to. All right, what was your favorite item? For me, I've gotta go with the charting thing from Greg Deckler. That was really interesting for me and I, I wanna play around with that and see what I can come up with. It's I, I always am interested in new techniques for how to do things, uh, so I'm gonna spend some time on that. But I wanna pass it off to you. What do you think? Go ahead and let me know down in the comments below. If you like the video, hit that like button. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos released. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.